Welcome everybody to Rock, Paper, Hand Grenades. I'm Matt Connerton, and to my right is the extremely exhausted Gary S. Hopper. Hi, Matt. Hello, Gary. I uh, think John out there has got that new uh, Common Core math going on. Oh, yes, yes, the 541. 542, whatever the heck you use numbers. Actually, that's the industry standard now in television. It you, is? You don't, you don't say those other numbers anymore. Is, is, it like, is it like a prejudice thing? Like they, what, what number did he skip? Uh, Are we allowed to he, say it? He skipped uh, three and two. We can say them, just we he can can't. Say, he can't. They can't be spoken in the control room. Oh, it's room. a union thing. Yes, oh, exactly. Right. Immediately. Yes, he'll be oh, fired immediately if he oh, says if he, if he uses right. those numbers. I didn't know. I you yeah. know, so I didn't get the memo. Well, you know, they don't I give us they don't give us memos. You gotta no. check your email. Oh, I gotta read my email. Yes. No, that's all filled with like constituents. Oh, good. Yeah, that's a pain. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie. Hello. My mentor, my GMO mentor. It's actually pretty funny because Selma, uh, what's Selma's last name? Albus. Selma Al Albus uh, uh, is a uh, constituent of mine. Where do you live? Salem. What? Salem. And anyway, they're, they're my like they're uh, uh, like a handful of my liberal friends. Yeah. And we disagree, I think, on everything, <laughs> everything, or just <laughs> most everything. Well, things. Selma almost Selma is everything. Okay. Yeah. Selma is just like <laughs> she's like you know, uh, but on GMO labeling we agree. But before we get into that, because we have G, uh, we're probably going to vote on it. I think next week, because um, the committee voted on it last week. Yesterday. Yesterday, and so it'll probably come up uh, next week or the week after at the state house. So we decided to uh, talk about GMO labeling today. Um, so I officially decided, because as people know, we've had people from Trump. I never really cared that much about Rubio, because I, I just don't, I don't believe him. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't care about Bush, because, I mean, even his mother didn't even want him running. <laughs> you know? That's true. She did make that, that she comment. Did, she did flip-flop. We, we, we've had enough Bushes. Yeah, she is a flip-flopper, flip which is why I'll never vote for her. Right. Well, I got a mail today, <laughs> yesterday, it says from, you know, from Barbara Bush, please support. Oh, really? So she flip-flops. She's worse than Romney. Oh, she's wicked bad. <laughs> as bad as I never, uh, Rubio. I, I don't know. Her. I don't know if you can zoom in on this, John, or not. But it's um, very fancy. It is. With the, I uh, got. I got this uh, you, fancy, fancy uh, thing. What do you call that? Lenticular. I don't that, know. that type it's, of. It's uh, like uh, John called it a hologram, but yeah. I'm not sure if that's really legitimate. That's either. what a lot of people call that yeah but anyway oh there i got it there i got it i got it i almost had it yeah that's the go. holographic part yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can see that on tv i got this now i can't i you know i've done thank you i've done my own mailings for my own stuff and yeah it costs you a lot of mo money to do a mailing mm -hmm. okay i don't know how much it costs to get that done yeah and that is also so much bs because I could see, I could see, because uh, this is Bush's super PAC that's doing this. Is that Right and, to Rise? Is that the right to that? Yeah, Right yeah. to Rise. <laughs> Maybe Third Right to Rise. I don't know. Um, that's not cool. I shouldn't say that. Are you saying Bush is a Nazi? I didn't say his, his PAC is. Although Prescott Bush was... Uh, yeah. There is a connection there. There is a connection. There is a legitimate connection. There. Anyway... Um, no, it's just how much it, it if if I had to send this, I don't know if everybody got one in the state, but you know, I think probably every registered Republican did or every uh, maybe every would, voter got one or I would think so. But that that's a lot of caught. I mean, send me a check or something. Why would you waste your money on that? If and the I, other thing too is Bush is in favor of amnesty. If I ever run for office, I want to have a pop-up book. Do you think that would be expensive? I think that's a very good idea. Yes. Send a pop-up book out. One with one of those like little uh, uh, um, things you open it up and it has music. Yes, yes. You know, have it singing a song to you. Hey, vote for me. How could anyone not vote for me Exactly, that? you know? Yeah. Ridiculous. What a waste of money. That is so ridiculous. Bush is doing whatever he can to tear everybody down. 
so that maybe you know he can climb up on the top of this heap of disaster that he's created. I think I think he's going to get out after New Hampshire. Why, why doesn't he do it now? Gosh, uh, who, who, who really wants to hear him? <laughs> I, went, I was at the state house today and uh, um, uh, for my committee work, and then I walked through the LOB lobby, and there was a press conference for Chris Christie. Yeah, and then I had to leave early because I was going down to to endorse uh, um, Ted Cruz at the. Uh, the uh, Trestle restaurant in the center of Gosstown, the Village Trestle. And there was more reporters at the Ted Cruz thing than there were people at the uh, Chris Christie thing. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. The place, the Trestle, I think the, co- the uh, firemen were coming in. I think they were about to just tell us we had to close down because we were just too, it was just really, really packed. Yeah. But, but you know, I, I kept going back and forth, mainly bef- between Cruz and Trump. Mm-hmm. And my my biggest thing is the Constitution. If we get another Democrat in there or a liberal Republican, the next appointment to the United States Supreme Court is going, if it's a Democrat, it's definitely going to be, uh, could change the balance in the Supreme Court and we could lose uh, legally owning our firearms. Mm. It is that huge. And I don't think most people really look at it that way, but the Supreme Court, we've had some five to four, a lot of five to four decisions, and the possibility that we could lose, and I, I don't want to say we could lose our Second Amendment rights, because we would still have them. We would just have to forcefully uh, impl- uh, uh, use them. We would not be legal anymore. I am not giving up my guns. I don't right. care what this, you know, a bunch of guys in robes in D.C. does. Right. I'm not relinquishing my guns because of some, uh, you know, I don't know what they got under those. What do they got under the robes? Anyway, what is it with the robes? But anyway, <laughs> but so to wet me, suits. Wet suits. <laughs> they're going to need them. So <laughs> um, anyway, so that that is really huge. So I've been looking for somebody to, because to me the biggest issue um, is oh wait I get it actually I can read part of it I don't have the whole thing but it was uh, Cicero when was Cicero 500 BC or this is I don't remember <laughs> you, you weren't there I wasn't I came a few years after Couple, yeah okay um, this is this is a truncated version of this yeah but it was Cicero says an enemy at the gate is less formidable but the traitor appeals to the the baseness that lies deep in the hearts of all men. He rots the soul of a nation. He works secretly and unknown in the in the night and undermine, undermines the pillars of the city and infects the body politics so that it can no longer resist. A murderer is less to be feared. And I believe that the uh, constant assault on the Constitution is our biggest it isn't ISIS ISIS can't destroy the fundamental ideas of the United States of America the Constitution of America mm-hmm. okay but the liberalism that's going on in, in, in Washington DC can destroy America through like I said just one appointment to the Supreme Court destroying the Second Amendment and once they've destroyed the Second Amendment now that Washington, D.C. and uh, uh, the government would then have all the power and the people would have none. It would completely change the balance of power. But does the Supreme Court typically hear Second Amendment cases? Yeah, they do. Mm. They do. They have recently. Okay. So anyway, so I went to support. I was kind of, like I said, I was, I was kind of uh, bouncing back before between Trump I felt like if Trump was legitimate, even though he's a little bit ridiculous, <laughs> yes. if he was legit and really went up there and, and, and basically started firing people who were incompetent, like, you know, the, the whole thing with the VA. Right. Mm. There should have been dozens of people who got fired. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Really? 
absolutely. I, agree I mean, I yeah. understand there's this, you know, uh, hiring of friends and all this other yeah. stuff and a political appointments and your hand washes my hand and and you wash my face and I'll, I'll shove butter in your nose. Um, but that's not nice. If somebody washes your face, you shove I, butter in their nose. I know it's oh, Washington D.C. though. Oh, okay, not right. Normal. Yeah, that's yeah, it's a little different there. And I understand all this this crap goes on, but man, you had well, how many thousands and thousands of veterans who died waiting? Oh yeah, I mean that's that's insane. Yeah, that is like fundamentally insane. And the fact that Ob- Obama just didn't do anything about it. He didn't fire anybody. I think he changed some uh, seats on the Titanic, but he that's ev- about it. He did eventually, after a lot of pressure. I can't remember his name now. I don't know if either of you can remember his name. He was head of the VA. He did eventually get rid of somebody, but yeah. it, but it was it took it, a while. Yeah, it took a while. Yeah, and, I actually have a call. Uh oh. Hello, welcome to Rock Paper Hand Grenades. Who's on the line? Butter probably. <laughs> Hi, uh, I wanted to uh, talk about Donald Trump. Yes. Sure. And uh, I watched the uh, the town hall, or the uh, rally that he had last night. I watched it on C-SPAN. Mm. I heard and some of it I on the radio. I like some of the language he used. Uh, yeah, he, he swore a couple using, times. Uh, swearing uh, when he used a, another word for crap. Yeah, I, I was listening on NPR and I heard that, yeah. yeah. They kept cutting okay. away from it. <laughs> and that really, that really turned me off. Uh, uh, he shouldn't be using that language. He's running for president of the United States. He's the only candidate also, to ever do that, too. I've been saying some ridiculous things. I was going to vote for him, but now I'm leaning towards Ted Cruz, the constitutionalist, or Marco Rubio. But I, uh, Marco Rubio. But I think I'm going to vote for Ted Cruz. That that rally last night. There's a lot of young people that go to that rally, and the language just isn't appropriate. No, you're right. I take my call. Hey, All thank right. you very much thank for you calling. Very much. I've heard him do that before too. Yeah. Well. Well. The 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 language thing is also is there, he's correct. I mean, that's that's something that's pretty inappropriate for a per- person who's running for president. But that I could forgive. Mm-hmm. What bothers me about um, Trump is a as you as you I don't know if you know this, but quite a few years ago I tried to take me and my friends and Ware tried to take. Chief Justice David Souter's house. Chief Justice David Souter was in the five, again, the five to four scenario, five to four decision that told the city of New London, Connecticut, that it was okay to take Susan Kilo's house and the houses around there so that they could build a really nice, fancy uh, apartment buildings and tennis courts and boat ramps for the executives, the executives at Pfizer Corporation. Okay, so they're yeah. taking private property to hand it over to some big bigwigs in business, and yeah. and uh, just, Justice David Souter was one of the Supreme Court justices who happens to live in Ware, hmm. and um, and use eminent domain to do that. Eminent domain is very very narrow band of things you can use yeah. it for. It's supposed to be for the public good, not for, the, for a bunch of well, fat no, cats. public good is not a good enough example. Because this could be argued it was for the public good. It has to be because it created jobs. Okay, yeah, true. Okay, so yeah. it has to be for infrastructure. Right. Infrastructure, yeah, roads. roads, dams. Uh, the trains were a, an actually a reasonably good idea because it was a, 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 it was a um, marriage of government and business getting together to you know, to build the roads across the country, which we couldn't have done without eminent domain. It right. Couldn't, could not have happened. True. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a lot of good applications, uh, reasonable applications for eminent domain, uh, but building uh, tennis courts for the rich and aimless is not one of them. Right. And and Justice uh, Souter agreed that that was perfectly okay as long as the city of New London thought it was going to be a good idea, whatever, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And... Uh, one of the guys that was on the committee with me trying to take Souter's house said that more property, after that decision, the Kilo decision, more property was being attempted to take by eminent domain than was lost in Katrina. Wow. Because once that case went down, now you start, if you've got money. Precedent was set. Yeah. Like Donald Trump. Yeah. And you say, whoa, I can just take anybody's property at at, at uh, baseline value, or basically whatever the value was, 
mm-hmm. initially before I got involved and wanted all this land. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a cool idea. Now you can just take, you could go to some lake, like say a lake in, in, in uh, Manchester or something like that, and say, I want all that land. And if you got the connections with the town council. Well, you know, Trump did end his concession speech in Iowa saying, maybe I'll come back here and buy a farm. Yeah. He'll probably take one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come yeah. back and take one. He yeah. it. So anyway, Trump has used eminent domain yeah. to take property. Mm-hmm. And if he's really, you know, so cares that much about the country, he never would have done that. He has enough money to to talk somebody into giving up their property. Right. You know what I mean? If you yeah. had a, a chunk of property that was that valuable and he needed it, he's got the money to buy you out. Well, isn't it true? Am I thinking of the right uh, case? Is it true that with Kilo, the Kilo decision, they ended up, so they got their way, they got the property and then ended up not doing anything with it? It's a, all abandoned. That's incredible. Because Pfizer... Uh, so they took it for nothing. Because Pfizer was basically the poster child for the case and they yeah. were ended up... Uh, pulling out of the whole deal because they were it was looking so bad for corporately yeah you know yeah. taking this little old lady's no well she actually was an old lady uh but anyway so that was one thing with trump so he actually doesn't really as much as he's going on the campaign trail telling everybody how much he loves them and he loves everybody at least until they're they seem to be opposing him i mean <laughs> yeah um he really loved ben carson then bart ben carson uh, rose in the polls and what did he say about ben carson he uh, mocked him at one, this was a couple months ago at a rally. Did you see that with the, the story about uh, Ben Carson? He went to stab his friend and hit his belt buckle. And Trump was like, this was like Trump's craziest moment. I remember seeing the footage. And it's like, this guy, has he lost his mind? He like steps away from the mic and he's playing with his belt buckle and says, look, see, I can just move it. It was bizarre. Right. Yeah. Well, he also said, yeah, that's exactly. It was that kind of crap because that was Ben Carson was starting to rise in the polls. Mm-hmm. He said, uh, Ben Carson has a violent history. Yep. Yep. He has been saying that. Okay. More than once. Yeah. So now we turn to Monday night when CNN reported that Ben Carson was, was going down to Florida to spend a few days. He wasn't going to New Hampshire and he wasn't going to go to, what's the next one? West Virginia? Where's South Carolina. South Carolina. He wasn't going to go to South Carolina, but he was going to do the prayer breakfast. Right. So that was a CNN report. So it looked like he was bailing out. Well, there was that cruise thing too, though. Well, the cruise he, looked like he, he looked like he was bailing out. Yeah. Just oh, let me finish this thought and I'll, I'll answer the call. Yeah. So then a it was a, uh, uh, the guy's name is Conrad. You can look this up. The guy's name is Conrad Close. At 6.30, he is a Rubio supporter. At 6.30, he tweeted out, uh, Rubio Rubio campaign pushing the narrative hard that uh, Carson is dropping out. Yeah. That was a Rubio person saying that. So it was there was a few of them that were actually yeah. saying hey wait a second this guy's pulling out well because so. the cruise campaign did something too yeah they, they sent did out that too. letter they yeah did too yeah which is weird why pile on ben carson i don't think he was that that much of a threat to begin with but uh hey welcome to rock paper hand grenades who's on the line hi uh, i notice you keep talking about republicans what do you guys think of uh Ber- when bernie sanders and if he becomes president and do you think that it matters that bernie was a presidential elector in 1980 for the Socialist Workers Party. <laughs> John. <laughs> the FBI Communist Party. Oh, yeah. Actually, something he admitted to. Yes. Well, well, actually, I want Bernie to win the nomination. You know why? <laughs> I would really love Bernie to win the nomination. First of all, I like him because I think he's honest. I agree, yeah. Okay? And I think he means what he's saying and I believe he would be a sincere um, candidate for the presidency, whereas uh, Hillary Clinton's a lion sack of whale wash, and I don't have <laughs> I don't trust a darn thing she says. And if there's a, if she wins the nomination, it's going to be just constant attack ads. What I'd really love to see is Bernie Sanders and Ted Cruz up because Ted Cruz really isn't attacking anybody that I don't think much if any yeah he's responding yeah you're right but right, he's not yeah. really attacking so you would actually have two people with two very very different visions of what the United States is 
actually discussing, well, what is the implications of going to socialism? Mm -hmm. What is the implications of getting rid, rid of the Second Amendment? And, and so on and so right. on. I think you'd have a very articulate, excellent presidential race where you could actually discuss issues as opposed to, mm. you know, who's, you know, whose picture of whose wife is, you know, because that's a Trump wins. We're going to get a lot oh, of... Oh, yeah. A lot oh, of, Trump versus Hillary, it's going to be... It, it'll be the dirtiest, most ridiculous campaign ever. It would be It would be hard. Yeah. But, but thank you for the call. I think it is interesting that he is socialist and... You know, uh, 40 years ago, they probably would have tried him for treason. <laughs> Thanks, John. Um, I'm not sure if he was still there, but. But, uh, but no, I just, um, and so there was the eminent domain thing. And there was also the art of the deal, his big claim to fame. Yeah. I haven't read it, but common sense tells you what's in it. Right. The art of the deal if I'm going to make a deal with Bonnie, I'm going to go up to her and t find out what she wants, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to try to give it to her because I see past what Bonnie wants and what I want. And if I give her what w she wants, I get what I want and I can make X number of dollars off this deal. Yeah. Like, for instance, buying your house because I see a casino. You know, and, and his deal was instead of, uh, you know, one thing going back to the other one, in the case of Bonnie having a house where I want my casino, he just used the political system and eminent domain to take it. Mm -hmm. But if there wasn't that avenue, he would go to her and say, you know, she'd say, well, it's my family's house. It's worth, you know, $200,000. He would say, Bonnie, I'll give you $500,000 for your house. I know. And we'll, sold. We'll, sold. Exactly. <laughs> my point. Okay. So. That's the art of the deal, yeah. is giving people what they want, being, you know, and so what do the Republicans want? What do the, what do the primary people, the Republicans in the primary want? They want somebody who's tough on this and tough on immigration and tough on ISIS and tough on this. He is giving them exactly what he wants, right? What he's, they want. He's saying everything they want. He's yeah. saying everything they want. Yeah. Now, what do people in the general election want? A much well, more moderate. Right, because you got to tack to the middle to you win the presidency. You got to tack to the middle to to become president. So, what's where's Trump going to go? Yeah, he's going to go to the middle, he's which I, which I middle. think is who he really is anyway. I think based it on is his too. Past statements. <laughs> so, if you look at what he has done in his life, the art of the deal, it is obvious. It's it's plain, as, as, you know, as you can be. That he is tacking to the right, like you said, and he's going to tack to the left, and he's going to be Hillary Clinton light by the time the general election comes, and he won't even care what the re the right wing people that are hanging around with him now do. Well, keep in mind too. I think you'll have to. He'll probably stay good on the Second Amendment because oh, I think he doesn't so. want to alienate people too much. Yeah. But he's not he's not going to be a conservative. But Hillary Clinton's not re really a liberal either. I was talking about this. I call it the Hillary paradox. Republicans generally loathe her, but the truth is in a typical field, and certainly next to Bernie Sanders, but I would argue next to most Democrats, if you're a Republican and you're gonna get stuck with a Democrat, she's probably the one you want. Not in terms of trustworthiness and all that, but on the issues, I mean, Bill Clinton was a fiscal conservative and Hillary is very conservative on foreign policy. What's and, the first thing Bill Clinton did when he took, took office? One of the first things he did. Uh, uh, don't ask, don't tell. Well, that was the compromise, but no, that, that was, was one of the, that, that was, was that was one of the first that things. Was much later, but no, one of the first <laughs> things he did was try, uh, the assault weapons ban. Yep. Right. Yeah. No, you're Second right. thing he did was national health care. Well, Hillary tried. Yes. Didn't get very far. But. So what happened in the uh, the interim uh, the uh, in midterm election? Uh, the uh, uh, Republican Revolution, he Newt Gingrich and the trounced. contract with America and he all got that. got trounced, yeah. and a lot of that was because of the Second Amendment. Yeah. I know people were b booing uh, uh, Dick Sweat, congressman who uh, basically turned on. I know people had called him the day before. He says, you know, uh, Congressman Sweat, what are you going to do on this? He says, oh, I've always stuck with the Second Amendment people. Don't worry about it. They promised him a, a, an ambassadorship to wherever it was, Austria or something like that. Yeah. Boom. Okay, I'm good. Oh yeah. He flipped. Yeah. So that's what yeah. Happens, yeah, and and that's what she's gonna do. She will nominate a anti Second Amendment Supreme Court judge 
and they will get in, they will get in, and we will lose our Second Amendment rights. Maybe so, she'll nominate Obama. That is probable. <laughs> it's possible. That is very probable. Or even her husband, although that would be too. So anyway, that's that's my that's why I you know I like a lot of the things Trump's saying. I'd like to believe him. I'd love to uh, see him get up there, and you know I just look forward to seeing the crowds of federal employees getting fired and and and, and <laughs> it, it has, it's like sugar plum fairy going on, but i don't believe them i really just don't believe oh them. i don't either I don't, I don't either anyway 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 bonnie GMOs. you want to tell them what i said tell them what i said on the because uh, i went in bonnie uh, cornered me i was um what was I doing? Oh, I was uh, working on an amendment. We're we're back to uh, trying to inform the jury as to their their right again because the courts have tried to mess with what we did before, yeah. which is what they do. This is a constant uh, ba battle. I'll talk about that some other time because that'll take another twenty minutes. But anyway, so I was I was getting the the uh, no. We were in the elevator. We were in the elevator, but no. Oh, that's what it was. I was. Downstairs meeting with uh, um, uh, Melissa Cruz. Um, she's a wonderful lady. Have you met her? No. Anyway, she's she's with Hope for Recovery, trying to get that going. Her husband owns Auto Fair, and um, she and they own a restaurant too uh, on Hanover Street. Oh. And um, but anyway, she's a really just a wicked down to earth wonderful lady, and she came up. Uh, they were having a, a subcommittee hearing on my bill to require that hospitals, before some, after somebody gets Narcan, they receive Narcan. They go to the emer They have to go to the ER if they if it's done by like a fireman or a police or whatever. Before they leave the ER, before they're discharged, they have to be given the opportunity to speak with a recovery coach. Okay. Oh, and a recovery coach is somebody that's in in the twelve step program, been sober a couple of years and has gone through training so that they can, it's somebody who's been there and done that. So when they start slinging BS about, well, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm just <laughs> gonna go home and see my friends. And no, dude, you're gonna go die. That's what you're yeah. about to do. You're trying to kill yourself. Because the thing people don't understand is that if somebody receives Narcan, you should be treating them as if it was a 12-year-old girl who would come in and just try to slit their wrists and die. Mm -hmm. Because people who are doing that much heroin are, are toying with the brink of death. Mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not doing it like when somebody smokes a joint where they just want to get a buzz on, eat Twinkies, and, you know, right. and, and watch uh, you know, Bugs Bunny. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they're toying with death every single time. And... Uh, so anyway, uh, a recovery coach can get real with them and say, dude, you go back there. If you're going back with your friends, you are going to use again. Do you want to change? And at least give them that option. But anyway, so that's where I was. I was at the subcommittee hearing for that bill, and then I, you, she accosted me. I use the word accosted. Oh, my. It was, it was pretty brutal. That sounds dangerous. Yeah. I, I grabbed his arm and twisted a little yeah, bit. Wow. It was. It yeah. was. My arm's still a little bit sore. That's your bad arm, isn't it? With your bad, bad arm, cuff? too. Yeah. 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 She knew which one. It was like she went right mm -hmm. for the jugular. Mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so then she said, then she, uh, so your GMO bill was being heard. Yeah. A week ago yesterday, we had a hearing on the, um, it's called HB 1674. Right. And it is a bill to require mandatory on package labeling of genetically engineered foods. And I knew Gary was in favor of labeling. And so I asked him if he would come testify. And he was one of 31 people to testify on our side. And there were, I'm sorry, there were 31 total. Nine of them were against the bill and the rest were in favor of the bill. Well, that's pretty good odds, but it didn't seem to make a difference on the committee, though. No. Um, no, we had a he the hearing went from 10 in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon. Wow. They mm. saved me to be the very last one. <laughs> when nice. I How sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Save the best for last. No, that's it. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what my granddaughter would say. Um, and then yesterday, the committee met again to exec the, the bill. So they 
talked about it for about a half hour and then they voted and we had a vote of 12 to 7 that the bill is inexpedient to legislate ITL which means basically they want to kill the bill right now in New Hampshire as you guys know um, not everybody watching might know but in New Hampshire every bill has to be heard on the house floor and this will have a debate no that's not true well every bill can be heard on the house floor okay but it doesn't have to be there's uh, what people oh, a couple things people should know if they if they go to the state website like it what's it what's your bill number HB 1674 okay if you go to the New Hampshire general court state the state website and um, you can type in HB 1674, find out what committee it's in or whatever. You can also go there and go to the House of Representatives and find out who your state legislators are mm -hmm. and email or call. Calling is better, mm -hmm. each one of them, and ask them to support the bill. Correct. Okay? The, the, everything's in there. All, you, all the information you need, if you're not comfortable with calling them. Uh, calling works better for me because I get so much emails. It's like... You know, if it says, you know, HB something, I'm for it. I, I'll, I'll figure out what the bill is, and then that's about it. I, that's it. I don't really care. I, it's, it, it's not that I don't care. It's just it's just too much. We had a but But anyway, let me, let me I, I was making a point, I'm sure. So <laughs> if you go on to that website, it will also tell you, uh, if you look up that bill, That'll say ITL, inexpedient, which that means is inexpedient to legislate. So if, if in a couple of weeks, if you look up my voting record, I'm going to say, uh, if, if you look up her bill, my voting record will say no. Okay. Because when you vote on the House floor, you're not voting whether or not you agree with the bill. You're only voting on whether or not you agree with the committee. Okay. Okay. So if they look up her bill and it says, you know, Representative Hopper says no, that means I agree with her and uh, want it to pass. Okay. So that's one confusing thing. The other yeah. thing, too, is your statement about they all have to be heard. What happens is, and we had a few of them in my, we exact on a few bills in judiciary, and the bills, uh, a, a good example is a legislator came in and it was a bill to attach people's paychecks for some sort of support or something like that. And he brought it into the committee <coughs> and, and said, um, this bill is not ready for prime time. I introduced it for somebody else, and it, I uh, ask you to vote it inexpedient to legislate. So the sponsor himself comes in and says, I really don't like this. Please kill it. Mm -hmm. So about a half hour later, we usually don't exec things that quickly. We usually think about it and figure out amendments or whatever. But this one, um, we um, because the sponsor asked us to, we wanted to kill it. So we voted. It was 17 to 0 to kill it, an expedient to legislate. But then I made a motion uh, to have it put on the consent calendar. Mm -hmm. And on the consent calendar, bills like that that you really don't need a floor debate on. There's nobody going to get up and try to to endorse the bill if the sponsor doesn't even want it. Mm. Um, so there's a whole list of litany of those. There might be a few dozen. On those bills, we vote, vote on them with a voice vote as a block. So not all bills get a hearing. Now they can. Let's say that your bill was killed 16 to 2. <clears throat> somebody can make, make a motion to have it put on the consent calendar, but any legislator, if they see that, can uh, go to the uh, House clerk and say, no, pull that off. Mm -hmm. so, it, okay. it, so it's not like they can hide it. It's not hidden there. It's just that we do vote on things as a block. Not everything gets like we don't have like a testimony or, or people getting up for or against every bill because that's that's pretty would be ridiculous but my, my terminology was wrong i guess I'm what i was trying to say that's that right. every every bill does get voted on by the house floor some of them in the consent calendar as a block yes and yeah, so yeah, like yeah. ours will be heard with a discussion um there will be a debate both sides will give their sides and then um the reps will be asked to vote to overturn the committee recommendation 
which we want them to vote no. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're correct. We want to vote no on the committee to, recommendation. Right. And once that's uh, defeated, then you can make a motion for uh, ought to pass. Right. Well, that's confusing. Not as bad as the Iowa caucus. No. <laughs> that's confusing. No, not when you have to start flipping <laughs> coins. Yeah, yeah. Do you, hear, do you hear that Hillary won six coin tosses in a row? Yeah, that initial story has been debunked, but... Yeah? Yeah, but it's still... Uh, it's still, it's a circus. The, the yeah, oh, caucus is a circus, and it, it should go away. They should just be a primary. Did you know that Ted Cruz got 70 times, over 70 times more votes than Hillary Clinton? Mm -hmm. I, I yeah, they had, I think the Republicans had the second largest turnout in Iowa caucus history. Well, he got I like 50-something thousand votes, and she got like 701. Yeah, yeah. There's no enthusiasm for her. Well, it was but, Bernie, too. Yeah, yeah. But I the, thought they weren't releasing the numbers. That's what I had. Watched. Oh, you're right. Yeah, because they don't. That's a projection. They don't. For whatever reason, the Democrats in the Iowa caucus don't release raw numbers. Maybe for the reason you're just describing. Oh, yeah. I'm just going by what I saw because I looked up for uh, the uh, caucus results. Iowa caucus, caucus results. Right. And it went down to the Democrats and it's like 701 votes. That's why times. it's not actual. That's not actual votes. It's something. It's so confusing though. I hate Iowa. You hate Iowa. I apologize, <laughs> Iowa. If there's anyone from Iowa watching, I'm sorry, but I hate you. You confuse me, and I can't figure you out. <laughs> so Iowa basically is the woman of the the uh, electoral process. It's confusing. <laughs> Illogical. Whoa, and, and, whoa. Whoa. Oh, Bonnie, whoa. I'm sorry. We forgot uh, you yeah, were there. Yeah. Oh, awkward. <laughs> Careful, careful. <laughs> okay, so anyway, explain to us what um, what GMOs are, because Gen it, yeah, I know, but exactly what they are. I okay, genetically modified organism. It's when they scientists take DNA from one living species and force it into another living species. Um, they do it. They've been doing it to our food for about twenty years. No long term health studies. Um, it's in about 80 to possibly as much as 90% of our food supply now. Right. Um, and, you know, if you read the ingredients, sometimes you can find it, but sometimes they use hidden words, so it's hard to identify. Um, people like myself. What do you mean hidden words, like invisible ink hidden words? Or? Um, no, just. <laughs> That'd um, be cool. Yeah, I yeah. Say, take like, a black food, light to read food it. Food starch. <laughs> Um, you have to put lemon juice. You have to put lemon juice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, some of the artificial flavors, you don't know what's in those. Yeah, um, like these words that are so big you can't pronounce them. It's probably something bad for you. Yeah. <laughs> As a general yeah. rule. <laughs> so people like myself want to have the – it basically comes down to right to know. We have the right – we should have the right to know what we're eating. And so we're asking – requesting, demanding that our food be labeled. Now, what other states already have that in New, in New England? Um, Connecticut was the first. Yeah. Um, Maine was the second. They both have trigger clauses that, so they haven't gone into effect yet. They're dependent on other states. They built in some protection clauses so they wouldn't get sued because the Grocery Manufacturers Association, which is Monsanto and all of the big um, food producing companies like Kellogg's, um, Pepsi, Coke, all of those companies have a group called the GMA, or Grocery Manufacturers Association, and they had threatened to sue the first state that passed a law. The third state to pass... They threatened to sue the first state? Oh, they're oh, so... Yeah. <laughs> huh, you know they love us if they threaten to sue you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Vermont passed a law and was signed into effect in 2014, and they promptly got sued. And Vermont knew it was going to happen. They built in a fund into their bill for um, the food fight fund. The food to fight fund. <laughs> <laughs> wow. To, to fight awesome. the lawsuit. That's huh. an awesome vision. <laughs> so, Visual. Vermont went to court 
and they throw like um, pies at each other across the uh, yeah, courtroom. Well, well, if you can't flip a coin, about, throw a pie. Well, it's a food fight, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shove butter in someone's nose. Exactly. Yes. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> okay, so. okay, sorry. That's all right. Um, Vermont, um, the judge said, we don't see a, a First Amendment issue here because um, the people have a right to, you know, they've proven that they have a need to know. Um, so we're not, comp you know, the grocery manufacturer said we're being compelled to speak when we don't want to. Right. And the judge said, I don't think that's a problem. Right, right. She said, I don't think there's a problem with interstate commerce, which was part of the argument. Um, she said the defining food as nat genetically engineered foods as natural, that might be an issue. We'll have to think about that one. So the Vermont state of Vermont said, please dismiss this case. Mm. She said, no, nah, we're going to go to trial. The grocery manufacturer said the effective date is July 1st, 2016, yeah. five months from now. And they um, said put, put that date on hold until... So they put, get a stay of execution. They tried to. They failed. Oh, they failed. She ruled in the favor of, of the state of Vermont. Okay. So now there's a mad scramble. Now, is this a federal judge or is this a sta this state? This was a state judge. Okay. Now, they ended up going to Second Circuit Court, and that was in October. They were told that this is a concern we need to know now, and they promised to render a decision by um, late December or early January, and they still haven't ruled on it, so we don't know what they're going to have. Um, so at this point, the case is going to trial end of April, and but by July 1st, every single store in the state of Vermont has to have removed all of the product that is genetically engineered and replaced it with product that says contains, you know, made with, I think it's made with genetically engineered ingredients. So the grocery manufacturers have their back up against the wall. They've got to be labeling the food now and starting to distribute it now to meet that July 1st mm. deadline. So in our bill, somebody brilliantly put in a little clause that says this does not go into effect until one year after Vermont goes uh, it becomes live. So our bill theoretically would go into effect July 1st, 2017. Um, but that gives us a year to get past the lawsuit. Mm. If they lose the lawsuit, they're not going to go into effect. Yeah. Therefore, we don't. But it's Too bad it takes too much gas to get it done, but it would be actually cool to have a uh, another way to tackle this would be to get enough citizens of New Hampshire who were willing to travel to Vermont to buy their food. The people in in that valley Yeah, the valley they're gonna be they're gonna be going over there. Right. They're gonna lose. Yeah, if but it was people, enough if it was enough people and the grocers started saying, wait a second, you know, there's people that really want this. You know, maybe, I don't know. Mm. Now, I, cool. our neighbors in Massachusetts, they have a bill. Um, they're trying to get it out of committee right now. But right now they have 75% of their legislators are co-sponsors of that bill. So really? Really, truly honest. That's really weird because I would have thought Massachusetts would be the hardest place to get it through because there's so many of those... those uh, pesky little legislators who rely on so much money to get reelected that Monsanto could fill a lot of pockets. Well, no, nope, the three quarters <laughs> of them have are supporting it. So, wow. you know, if we can get get that, Maine has a trigger clause that five contiguous states have to have a similar law. Five, con what does the word contiguous mean? Next door. So if you look at a map. There's not five next, that's what I, well, there's only well, two that are next to it. No. New Hampshire is the only one that touches it. 
We're the only one that borders it. But then oh, okay, it would be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you know, I was Vermont, Massachusetts. Okay, yeah, Vermont you're right. borders us, Massachusetts, Connecticut. That would give them the continuing. F5. Must Con mean con contiguous. 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 I realize contiguous, but I'm trying oh, okay. to figure out where, because I would have thought it right, was right next to it, which, like, she's right. It's only in New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be a really good clause to have in there. Five contiguous states, and there's only one. It'd there's only one bordering, <laughs> but it's the people who border us would be part of that. Right. Definition? Contiguous. Yeah. Look up contiguous. Well, wait, so, wait, no, there's two border. Wait, bordering? New Maine. Oh, bordering Maine. We're, I'm sorry. We're the only state. I thought you, I, I, I misunderstood. Maine. I, I, I thought you said Vermont. I was confused and for a second. And then it would be states that touch us. So right, if right. Massachusetts passed... If Vermont passed, right. Massachusetts is contiguous to um, Connecticut. Right. So that would give them Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut would give them five states. Okay. But they're trying to, right now, they're working on legislation to repeal that and just make it five states. Yeah, the definition of contiguous, sharing a common border, touching the 48 continu contiguous states as an example, or next or together in sequence. <laughs> something burning what the heck is she trying to get at I don't know I, 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 I don't know I make one derogatory <laughs> comment about you know you, you made that comment about women I know, you know? I know. And she holds it against you isn't I that know. just like a woman I oh know. no uh, oh again again oh. so anyway <laughs> And and just for the so the viewers know, I got I you like I said you twisted my arm and forced me in there against my will. <laughs> and my biggest thing is is somebody I've got a lot of allergies, mm -hmm. and one of the funniest ones was when uh, uh, I was at the it was right next to where Chuck E. Cheese is. It used to be a a, a buffet. I forget what it was called, across from the street, across the street from the mall. And I went in there with my, I think uh, Sean was probably about six or something like that. And I went in there with the family, and they didn't have the ice cream labeled. Oh, yeah. Okay? I remember you talking about this. And this is, goes back to labeling. And there was, I thought it was um, uh, cookie dough. And chocolate swirl, and that's what Sean got. And he took a little bit of a little bite, and he says, "I think I'm allergic to this." So we had the waitress go back, and she said, "No, this just it's just because uh, we were suspicious of the the uh, cookie dough because that's got chunks, yeah, mm -hmm. which you know could feel like peanuts." So um, so no, it was okay. So I said, "Well, whatever, do it. I'll eat it." So I ate it. Well, within. Ten within uh, um, two minutes, I knew I was allergic to it. Mm. With it, I I downed a lot of Benadryl, and then within say seven or eight minutes, even the soles of my feet were itchy. Yeah. Okay, it's like that quick. Mm -hmm. I got over to CMC. By that time, you know, there's their blood pressure is dropping quickly. Mm. And uh, the one good thing is you go right to the head of the class. Oh yeah. You go in, you're having an allergic reaction. They don't even you don't sit down. They don't. You know, and uh, so anyway, I'm sitting in there, and what they do, what happens with somebody with an allergic reaction is your body's trying to expel whatever it is that it thinks it should be allergic to. It's, an, mm -hmm. it's a hyperactive immune system. And um, so it's trying to expel it by creating phlegm and everything else. And the way it creates the phlegm is by converting blood cells into phlegm. Mm -hmm. It actually takes water out of your regular bloodstream or liquid and oh. your blood pressure drops, and that's how you go into shock and die. It sounds like it dehydrates you too at the same it, time. It does right? all kinds of cool stuff. So, yeah. um, so anyway, I, I they 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 shot me up with all kinds of liquids and stuff. They get a pump you full of liquids really quickly, and I get all these IVs in my arm, okay, like this. And I hate IVs. I hate needles. It's just it it wicked grosses me out and makes me very uncomfortable. Mm. And I had my asthma spray in my left pocket. So I looked at the nurse and I said, I said, the doctor said I could use my asthma spray. She says, would you mind getting it out of my pocket for me? She says, I'm not falling for that. 
<laughs> oh, it was a Friday night, so you know. Yeah, you know. probably been around the. Anyway, <laughs> but but anyway, so that's why I went in there is just because as somebody with allergies, I should be able to know if something is genetically modified only by virtue of the fact that it could be something that I've eaten a hundred times and never had an allergic reaction, but if all of a sudden it comes through as genetically modified, because what they mess with is the proteins. Yep. And it's the proteins that cause allergic reactions. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's like, mm. you know, egg protein, different types of proteins uh, are what cause allergic reaction. And genetically modified foods, they mess with the proteins. So therefore, the probability that they're going to create one that I just happen to be allergic to oh. is very real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if it's, uh, I'm trying to think uh, of a sunflower seeds, I can eat sunflower seeds. Well, if all of a sudden I see on a label that all of a sudden they come up with genetically modified sunflower seeds, well, I can still eat them, but I would be cautious and only have a few mm. and, and see, see, how, you see how I react and then have a few more. Mm -hmm. And before I take enough to actually kill me, because if it reacts with uh, with the same f uh, ferocity that peanuts uh, react, yep. it would only take like a handful of those to kill me. Wow! So it's 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 really important. People mm. should have a right to know yep. what they're putting in their body. That's why yep. I went in there, and I I think I uh, uh, NH1 had me on for my one yes. second of fame talking <laughs> about the the Franken Franken what did I say Franken DNA. I they're, the yeah, yeah. Franken, Franken, Franken DNA. They're going to oh. create a Franken DNA that's going to kill somebody. <laughs> I didn't get that at first. Get it? Yeah, I get it. I get it now. now one He's of the kind things of slow. I want to point out is HP 1674 is very similar to the bills that passed in Vermont, Connecticut, and um, Maine. And one of the things we have is an exemption for certain things. And one of those exceptions exemptions is restaurants right so even with this bill it would not help you when you went to a restaurant to know but the food you're buying for eating at home you would be able it's to. a step in the right direction it's you a can't uh, a lot of people get active in, in politics and they want to change everything all at once mm -hmm. it would be can, ideal it would be but if you can no. just if you can incrementally get there it's a game of inches it is a game of inches yep um, so the bill's number is what? 1674. Okay, so what I need people who are watching to get on the state website, okay, and go to the New Hampshire General Court, and then on the left-hand side, it'll have a, a tab for New Hampshire representatives. A, a little ways down, it'll say, who is my legislator? Because that is a very important thing. If I get emails and I look down and it's from somebody from Berlin... It's like, so what? You're probably you're emailing everybody. So what? Right, right. Okay, but if I see it's from somebody from Ware or Deering, well, I feel an obligation to it, uh, read it and, and likely respond to it, at least, you know? Yep. But if it's from Berlin, I'm not going to email, you know, make 100 emails to people in <laughs> Portsmouth and, and this and that. So anyway, if you go down, uh, go, uh, when you're navigating, it'll say, who is my legislator? And you can click and pick your town click on it and it'll come up with the list of your state legislators you you call you you can call i su suggest call call each one and and say please uh override the inexpedient to legislate on which hb 1674 1674 please override that and uh pass that bill because i have a right to know um but that's something people can do it's wick it's very very easy uh, they sh and it's a way to get involved. Mm -hmm. And when you're done with that, uh, call your friends and tell them to vote for Ted Cruz. Oh, <laughs> okay. Same thing. Sure. Yeah. It yeah. Is exactly the right. same yeah. thing. You know. Mm -hmm. So what what we've been <laughs> told is that one phone call has as much impact as ten emails. So. Oh, okay. So I am correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I was correct. Yes. Excellent, That's once Gary. in a row. Well done, sir. Well done. All right, oh, buddy. 
<laughs> and if, if people want to let us know how your reps are working, it would help us in the planning stages. And you can send an email to info at nhrighttoknowgmo.org. Say that again. Send an email and right. say, oh, my rep Gary supports it, which I already know, so you right. don't need to let me know about him. Um, but info at nh right to no gmo dot org okay yeah so call, call your state legislator call them let them know you've called and and you know try to work this out because it is it is really important we there is i know that there is somebody that's going to die from this absolutely we be, can't we can't prove that people are getting sick from this but we can't prove they're not well yeah. if they're hiding information they're hiding uh, it for a reason. Mm. If the labels aren't there, we don't know if people are getting sick, why they're getting sick. Right. Hey, GMOs have, have been doing some wonderful things, especially in third world countries where they've actually been able to add, like I think it was vitamin A in certain uh, food products so that these people who are dying of certain sicknesses aren't dying. So there's some really good things about it. Actually, the vitamin A is a fallacy. Oh, because that's what they they're said. using the wrong. Wait, wait, wait! You saying politicians lied? Well, I'm saying that <laughs> maybe I'm they don't have time. the same information. Okay. Um, <laughs> I have the information from the senior scientist at Consumers Union. Okay. Um, which is part of the Consumers Report. He actually was one of our testifiers. Okay. Um, but he has said that. When they do the genetically engineered rice, there are two kinds of rice, and they're using the paddy rice instead of the field rice, or the field rice instead of the paddy rice. It's not the kind of rice that people are using. Okay. The vitamin A doesn't stay very long in the rice. You need to have an enormous amount of fat at the same time as the vitamin A for it to work. Oh. So there are multiple reasons why that is not working on my website I actually have an article um, on vitamin A and and the golden rice and and why it is not hmm. um, not efficient and I know we did hear testimony the other day yeah we that did. said it was really important from another another one of the reps right. but um, you know according to the scientists this is inaccurate. Is that mm. inaccurate? That's funny. Politician being inaccurate. Yeah, it happens. I know. Once, I in, a, once in a while. A really, that's a stretch. Yeah, you know. It is. What is? What was that? Uh, what's that place where the water that politicians caught and picking poison the people? Oh, in Flint, Flint, Flint Michigan. Michigan. What a disgrace. In America. So you got you got <laughs> Flint, Michigan's poisoning their own people, and yeah. you you don't think Monsanto's willing to poison people to make money? <laughs> you got to be out of your mind. Part of my testimony, I talked about Aniston, um, Alabama, and Nitro, West Virginia, um, two places where Monsanto created disasters and kind of brushed them off. Oh, yeah. No, not, not Monsanto. <laughs> if anybody's listening, uh, I love Man Monsanto, and I don't. I completely disavow any because I think it's spies. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you very much <laughs> for your fight, thank Bonnie. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, sir. And Johnny? Johnny. Yep. Our new producer, Johnny. We're going to have to have you on the show, you know. All right. Again. We got a new producer because the other one, I guess we weren't paying him enough. Yeah. Yeah, zero dollars apparently is not enough. To, but anyway, it's we're really. It's more than you wrap the. Uh, not as much as your reps get. I know. We get a lot more than that. But anyway, thanks for uh, st uh, Steve for uh, doing it for, what, is six months anyway, right? I think, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, thereabouts. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you Bye, next everybody. week. Thank you. <laughs> All right.